Well, this is it. It's past time for our plexit, our pro-life exit. This is the final chapter, the end of the road, a 47-year politico-religious experiment to regulate abortion that our Lord Jesus, quite frankly, has never been happy with. My mother and father signed up for ending abortion, not to a political football game without an end zone. Three years in a row, Senate Bill 13, the abolition of abortion in Oklahoma Act, was killed by religious leaders, legislators who go to church. Many are Baptists. Baptist leaders who killed bills to abolish abortion both in Oklahoma and in Texas. Megachurch pastors and denominational leaders also participated, and even National Right to Life. All of them pro-life, all killing bills that end abortion, all in favor of situational bills that regulate and legalize child sacrifice in the womb. You're in denial. You're pretending to not hear us. You're thumbing your noses at us behind our backs. You are obstructionists. Just look at the free will Baptists. Just look at the Oklahoma Baptists. Both made resolutions calling for the abolition of abortion immediately without exception or compromise. Just look at the Republican Party platform. They did too. Look at your own resolutions in the House. In 2017, the House of Representatives adopted Resolution 1004 with 20 co-authors. I quote, A resolution directing every public official in Oklahoma to exercise their authority to stop the murder of unborn children by abortion. Directing Oklahoma judges to not interfere with legislators' right to clarify Oklahoma criminal law and direct distribution. And this year, you ignored them and carted in House Bill 1182 and Senate Bill 1859 through the back door. Nobody, nobody was rallying in freezing temperatures, bringing their children out to implore you. Happy to do so. Nobody was rallying in freezing temperatures, bringing their children out to implore you to hear Senate Bill 1859. Nobody cares about it. I talked to the bill's author just now. I don't think he cares about it. The rallying of approximately 3,000 people was a seismic result, not just for the unity of faith groups and the rescue of 5,000 plus babies murdered yearly in Oklahoma, but it was also a definitive stand and a demand for plexit. Leave the pro-life establishment. Leave it. The ordinary people, God-fearing, Christ-exalting, gospel-preaching, little people of Oklahoma gathered. You know, People who've watched year after year the political gamesmanship and the posturing to keep a seat in office at the expense of innocent blood. They gathered and rejected your blood-drenched rhetoric. They rejected your lifeless plans that you did all you could do. And they said, we want God's precious creation protected. We want all preborn image bearers to have equal protection under the law. Amen. We want you to stop regulating and legalizing the slaughter of our preborn brothers and sisters and fellow Oklahoma citizens. We want you to repent. We want you to repent and we'll do it with you before the God of the universe whom you've offended by offering his precious children on narcissistic altars of convenience. This is why we're here. And this is what must happen. Drain the pro-life swamp. Now until last year, 
I was pro-life. I gave my annual sermons. I thought I was supporting the ending of abortion. And then I found out that's exactly not what these politicians want. They are pro-life. They are different from us. They hold to pro-lifeism. Now, what is pro-lifeism? Well, pro-lifeism is the religiously inclusivistic or secular, it's a big tent, belief and practice that abortion is bad. And the way to end it is by making pragmatic, situational compromises and exceptions with child sacrificers to regulate and legalize pre-born murder and just hope that someday it'll be stopped by the Supreme Court of the United States of America. Pro-lifeism is pragmatic. It's compromising to legalize abortion. It is not what most of you pastors and Christians think that it is. Most of you, like me, whether you know it or not, are abolitionists. Here's what abolition for abortion is. Abortion abolitionism is the God-centered, gospel-driven, biblical doctrine and practice that abortion is the sin of murdering God's preborn image bearers. And the way to end it is by demanding total and immediate criminalization with equal protection under the law. It's calling for repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. Abortion abolitionism, or, or abortion abolition, establishes equal rights, equal protection, and equal justice for all life from fertilization to natural death, before God and under the law. It simply prohibits murdering pre-born image bearers. Now, that'd be nice if that was pro-life, but it's just not, unfortunately. These pro-life politicians don't want to, to end abortion. You know what? They would have done it if they wanted to. They have, the, they have every legal power and every legal right under the U.S. Constitution and under Oklahoma Constitution to end abortion. What's more... They are accountable to their maker who commands them to establish justice for the weak and the fatherless. It is God who demands that they rescue the weak and the needy and deliver them from the hand of the wicked. God has extended His authority to our legislators so they will uphold justice on God's earth. Now legislators... Should you forsake your charge or misuse your God-given power, you fail to represent and reflect God. If you subvert justice for the weak and the fatherless, does not God know? If you honor bribes or fear men, fixing your eyes on voter booths or committee chairs or earmarks, or one more ladder rung. Are you not naked and exposed before the Lord? Today is your day to stand. On your day to stand, do you have no strength to demand justice? If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Rescue those who are being taken away to death. Hold back those who are, being, who are stumbling to slaughter. Amen. Obey the Lord. Do you think you will be able to plead ignorance when you have to give an account before your Maker? No. If you say, Behold, we did not know this. Does not He who weighs the heart perceive it? No. Does not He who keeps watch over your soul know it? And will he not repay man according to his work? You have chosen this position of authority, and God has granted it to you, so honor him and the lives of the preborn image bearers. So the question is, what do we do next? To my fellow pastors and brothers and sisters in Christ who want to see abortion ended immediately without exception or compromise, Leave the pro-life establishment. Leave the pro-life politicians. Follow Jesus Christ. 
Take up your cross and follow Him. Not these politicians. If you're a pastor, if, if you are a pastor, join those of us who've repented of our inactivity and standing by as the innocent are led to slaughter. Reach out to one of us. Repent with us and we'll come alongside you. Preach abolition to your church. And here's another thing you can do. Hold these pro-life politicians accountable for regulating and not ending abortion if they are members of your church. We offer a beacon of hope to our nation which stands in judgment before God. Should you repent of your rebellion against God and put your faith in Jesus Christ, trusting in His righteousness alone, then you too can be saved from the wrath to come. The game is over. The lines are drawn. It's time to decide. It's time to plex it. Leave the pro-life establishment and abolish abortion.